Welcome back everyone to another video here on the Unknown Coder channel. As always, I'm Ethan or Unknown Coder and we are going to be doing another leak code problem here. This time we're going to be doing duplicate zeros and now these are when problems start getting a little bit more and more complicated and actually take a little bit more work in thinking about doing. So like we said, we're doing the duplicate zeros and the goal of duplicate zeros is to go ahead and take a fixed length array called R and then each time that we see a zero, we want to go ahead and duplicate the that zero and the important thing here is that we want to shift the remaining elements to the right and something that's important here is that one they want you to do this in place whenever we get to the end and we duplicate all of our zeros it's basically just going to ignore everything that runs off so what we need to think about is how do we go ahead and figure out what the end is and, and things of that sort but let's go ahead and just take a look at an example to see how this is going to play out and then we can start thinking of some pseudocode to work this out so if we go ahead and take a look at example Number one, we're going to have an array called array, and this is going to have the numbers one, zero, two, three, zero, four, five, zero. And then our outputs is still gonna be inside the array. It's gonna be array is equal to, and it's gonna be one, zero, zero, two, three, zero, zero, four. And the thing to notice here is that it's going to end at four. So that means that this five and this zero are no longer going to be there. We basically have to cut these off and shift everything else over one. And those are forgotten about. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next example. Once again, an example number two, we'll have an array that they call array. And this one is going to be one, two, three. And the output in this one is just going to be one, two, three again. So outputs is equal to one, two, three. Obviously, because we don't have anything in there and we're not going to swap anything. So we're only going to go ahead and push things over and duplicate things if they are equal to zero. Now, let's go ahead and jump back up and take a look at some of our constraints. And let's go ahead and start thinking about how we're going to solve this. So for this problem, our constraints are fairly simple. The first one is that the length is just going to be between one and 1000. So theoretically, you could do a brute force algorithm here and it's not going to hurt anything. We don't necessarily need to. And the other big thing is is that the numbers are only going to be between zero and nine. So numbers in array between zero and nine. Not that this is that big of a deal. We don't have to do anything crazy. We don't have to make sure they trick test or anything. Um, there's going to be the lowest number is zero and the highest number is going to be nine. Nothing crazy there. So now whenever we're thinking about actually solving this, there's a couple ways to do this. The first one is kind of a brute force algorithm where you go ahead and loop twice through both of them and nest them. However, a little bit smarter way to do this is to think about this in multiple steps. So the first step being looping through and figuring out how many zeros that we're going to have to actually duplicate. And then the second step is looping through again and actually duplicating those zeros and getting rid of everything else that we need. This will actually be O of N because we're not nesting the loops. We just have two single for loops. The first for loop we want to go ahead and do is figure out how many duplicate zeros we have so we know where to start at the end of the array. And then we also want to go through at the end of the array and kind of duplicate the zeros and move everything over. So let's go ahead and take a look at some pseudocode at how this might work. What we want to do is loop through array while the number of duplicates number of dupes plus the current index is less than or equal to array dot length and while we're looping through there what we want to say is if the array of index is equal to zero then we want to increment number of dupes plus plus basically and then if the last index is equal to zero. So if the value of the last index is equal to zero, we can't add any more zeros. So in that case, we don't increment them. So don't increment dupes. So we're basically gonna loop through until we have so many dupes that we're gonna run out of space at the end of the array. Then after this loop is over, we wanna go ahead and start at index is equal to the last index we found. And if the array of index is equal to zero, we wanna go ahead and set the array of index plus the number of dupes equal to zero because this is basically where we're gonna be at at the end of the array. Then we also wanna go ahead and set the one previous because it's going to duplicate it. So we also wanna set array of index plus dupes minus one to zero. And this is how we'll go ahead and do that. And then otherwise we want to go ahead and set the array of index plus the number of dupes we have equal to the array of index. So we'll 
basically kind of have a little bit of a two pointer going here. We're keeping track of a couple different indexes and a couple of different values. And this might be a little bit confusing for now, but let's actually go ahead and run through an example and I'll show you guys how this is going to look and how this is going to work. And then maybe, and hopefully it'll look a little bit nicer and be a little bit more familiar to you guys whenever we see it inside of an example. So for our example, we're going to go ahead and do the first example that we looked at. So the example is going to be the array equal to one, zero, two, three, zero, four, five, zero. And then we're going to go ahead and do our first loop right here. Index zero array of I is equal to one last is equal to zero and dupes is equal to zero. I equal to one array of I is equal to zero. Last index is equal to one dupes is equal to zero technically, but then we also say dupes plus plus here for I equal to two array of I will now equal to two. The last index is equal to two and dupes is equal to one for I equal to three array. I is now going to be equal to three last index is equal to three and dupes is still equal to one for I equal to four array of I is now going to be equal to zero again. The last index we have currently is equal to four dupes is equal to one. However, we do say dupes plus plus here for I equal to five. Now our array of I is equal to four. Our last index is equal to five and our dupes is equal to two. Now at this point, our last index plus dupes is equal to array dot length minus one. So now we have found our final index, found the final index, continue to the next loop. So now we've figured out where our last index is. So we're gonna start where I array I is equal to four and we're gonna move backwards from there. Let's go say second loop here. So to start our second example, we're gonna set I equal to last, which in our case is five to start out. And then we also have dupes still equal to two. So now what we're gonna say is for I equal to five, the array of I is equal to four. And since this is the case, we're gonna go ahead and set the array of I plus dupes equal to four. Then we're gonna go down one and we're gonna say I four here the array of I is going to be equal to zero and our dupes is still equal to two. Since this one is equal to zero, we want to go ahead and set the array of I plus dupes equal to zero. And we also want to go ahead and set the array of I plus dupes minus one equal to zero. And in this case, this is array six in array five. And then we want to go ahead and say dupes minus minus. We have one less duplicate to worry about. For I equal to three, we're gonna go ahead and have array of I is equal to three. And our dupes that we have left is still equal to one. So we'll go ahead and just set our array of I plus dupes equal to three. Bring it right over. For iteration I equal to two, our array of I is equal to two dupes is still equal to one. So once again, we just go ahead and set array I plus dupes equal to two. For I equal to one, our array of I is equal to zero. Dupes is still equal to one at this point. And here we'll go ahead and set the array of I plus dupes equal to zero. And this is array two at this point. And we'll also set array of I plus dupes minus one equal to zero. So this is array of one. And finally, we get the i equal to zero, where array of i is equal to one, our dupes is equal to zero. And then, so we'll go ahead and just set the array of i plus dupes, which at this point is just i plus zero, is gonna be equal to one. And then that is going to be the end of it. So basically what we did is on this iteration, i equals five, we set array of seven equal to four. In iteration four, we set array six is equal to zero. And array five is equal to zero. In iteration three, we set array of four equal to three. In iteration two, we set array of three equal to two. And then in i equal to one, we set array two is equal to zero. Array one is equal to zero. And then finally, we set array zero equal to one. So that will make it so that it goes one, zero, zero, two, three, zero, zero, four, where you can kind of read it from top to bottom like so and it's going to end off as we need. So again, this one's a little bit more complicated, a little more confusing. But let's go ahead and hop into leak code and take a look how we can actually implement this into our actual solution. 
To start out, we're going to have a few variables. Firstly, we're going to have int duplicates is equal to zero. So we're going to start out with zero duplicates. We're going to have int length is going to be equal to array.length minus one. And then finally, we're going to have int left index is equal to zero. So that's the far left index. And then what we need to go ahead and do is we need to loop while our left index is less than or equal to the length minus the duplicates. So we need to go ahead and go until we've reached the end of our new array after we've duplicated the zeros. And inside this, if our array of left index is equal to zero, we want to first check to see if this is the value at the very end of the array. So we're going to say if our left index is equal to length minus duplicates inside the if statement saying that we have reached the end we're going to say array of length is just going to be equal to zero and then we're going to go ahead and say length minus minus to break out of here and finally we'll go ahead and break out of the loop otherwise if this is not the case we're just going to go ahead and say duplicates plus plus and then we need to also go ahead and say left index plus plus that way we don't infinite loop and then we need to go ahead and need a last index variable and this is going to be equal to the length minus the number of duplicates that we have found and then we need to go ahead and loop through and copy these over so for int i is equal to last index i is greater than or equal to zero and i minus minus we're going to say if the array of i is equal to zero then we want to go ahead and duplicate our zeros so the array of i plus duplicates is going to be equal to zero then we're going to decrement the number of duplicates so duplicates minus minus and then we're going to have the array i plus duplicates again is equal to zero so this is going to go ahead and duplicate that zero otherwise we're going to say array i plus duplicates Duplicates is going to be equal to we're just going to copy over the value and now hopefully I haven't typoed anything let's go ahead and submit it and as we can see, we are going to beat 100% of the runtimes. The space complexity could use a little work, but I was trying to focus on the runtime. And this is how we can go ahead and solve the duplicate zeros problem here on LeetCode. As always, I'm Ethan Encoder. If you do enjoy this video, please go ahead and leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Everything helps out a ton in my YouTube journey. As always, hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next video.